Um, good morning, students. How is everybody? Uh, my name is Puti, and then I'm going to be with you for today's journey, which is going to be lasting for the next two hours. Okay. So I'm going to be with you from 10 up until 12. Can just somebody say hi to me so that I can confirm if you guys are alive? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Huh? Promise me that you hi. just promise me that. Just promise me that you didn't hear our conversations in the tutor room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, today it's going to be the end of our journey, just between me and you, right? And um, before I start, I just want to thank each and everyone who tuned in. Um, I hope it was valuable at both of our sides, at your sides and my sides. Okay. And. Uh, the other thing is, uh, as I promised you guys, that we're going to be on topic E, which is going to be the part of our last session. I think now I'm just showing everybody my question. Let's see. Okay, we're going to start with a little bit theory of this. All right, before I go further, I want to know if uh, there's any questions from your side that you guys want to know. I know I didn't, I didn't respond to your email last night. I will respond to them, uh, the previous ones, and the today ones at once when I get home today. Puti, hi, it's Mpumi here. I wanted hi. to hi. I wanted to find out your recordings. Wh where can I get access to the previous recordings? Because I couldn't make the previous session. Okay. Um, apparently, there's a link that they sent them uh, through to. I'm gonna ask Johan again to actually can remind me of that. Uh, usually, when I start the class, I just put the page first. But it seems like it's not here today. Okay. But uh, I will make sure that I give you that link before I end the the, the session today. Beautiful. Thank you. Right. Next question. Is everybody happy? Everybody OK? Ah, there All we good. go. Okay. okay. Um, any questions? OK, I thought I had somebody speaking behind there, but it's OK. You know the rules. You go on mute and uh, we discuss things and then if i've got questions for you you unmute yourself you raise your hand i pick you and then you give me the answer that's clear please let's not uh let's not uh, what is it, the noise behind our background to actually intervene within our class okay with all due respect please i'm begging you guys okay because it's going to cause a bit of an intervention which is going to cause a delay and then obviously we're going to be behind with times and everything. Let's just end off things on a good um, on a good note. Right. OK, accounts that we'll be focusing on today, it's going to be your membership fees accounts. And then we're going to uh, focus on the special funds account and a little bit of a tr uh, the entrance fee account and a little bit of the income and expenditure accounts, as well as the statement of receipts and payments. OK, and the accumulated funds. OK. Um, I made a little summary here with regards to the special fund account. It's not a usual thing. Sorry, it's 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 actually quite unusual for students to actually can take a, what's called a special fund account because you've probably never seen it in one of the previous exam papers. It's a very scarce account. I don't know why, but I think the lectures they do actually know why. Okay, but just to be on the safe side, it's important for us to actually do it. Right. Let's have a look at the special fund account here. It's initiated for a specific um, objective of the club, right? Normally it's an account that has to be opened when you are running a club, okay? And for example, if the club has decided that, you know what, we need to we need to paint our building or we need to buy a certain machine or we need to buy a certain, um, a certain gifts for, uh, let's say some, 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 some crash or some school somewhere else in your city, then this kind of account you actually can, you open it for that part of an objective, right? It's separated from the accumulated funds account. As we know, accumulated fund account is the contract allocation account for the entrance fee. Okay, and it's not including the general expenditure of the organizations, but the fund account. But the capital of that amount must be invested in sound security. Here's the reason why. You can't, um, you can't invest a capital amount out of the NGO account in a non-sound security account. Okay, so you need to be sure that 
you're going to get some great results based on what you are investing on. I hope that actually makes sense. Okay. So obviously, whoever is going to be responsible for the investments there would just make sure that whoever that he investing or she invests in wealth and whatever the type of account that they are investing on is quite sound for the benefit of the business. Right. Capital amount must be disclosed under the statement of financial position as a special account. And then it's going to have, sorry, as a special account with a non-expendable funds. Okay. Here is the thing. This is treated exactly the same as you have decided that, you know what, I need a certain fixed account with a certain financial institution. You're going to take the money out of wherever, but usually it will come out of your paycheck. And then you say, I'm investing 5,000 rent with Old Mutual or with APSA or with whoever the financial um, institution is. Okay. Because it's an investment, then it's going to be, that's the reason why you see that being recorded under your statement or let me rather say disclosed under your statement of financial position as a special funds account or the non-expendable funds. Okay. So remember, under a normal sole trade of financial statements, we, we never had this kind of things. We'd rather have what's called a fixed deposit than the special fund account. A, spun, a special fund account is a, is, a, is a special account that it's only applicable under their NGOs. Okay, or you can call it the club or the bars and all of those. Okay. And then we've got uh, what's called the membership fees account. Sorry, we've got what's called the non-expendable. So we've got the non-expendable and then we've got the expendables, meaning that the expendable are going to be responsible for the interest that we earn from what we have non-expendable or from what we have um, invested our money with. Okay, and uh, I've created this kind of a question for you, and uh, it includes all these sorts of things that I mentioned, from your membership fees, your entrance fees, your receipts and payment statements, or your income and expenditure statements, and as well as the special funds account. But listen here, because here's the thing. Um, your statement of receipts and payments and income and expenditure accounts, they are normally performed in a T account, okay? Sorry, before I forget one thing here, we uh, I've also included what's called the trading account here. Right, and before I go further there, I just wanna ask you, as you know the process, you need to uh, you need to raise your hand if I've got a question, and then I'll pick your name, and you will give me the answer or suggest an answer towards our question. What's the main objective for the trading account? Why do we have to do what's called the trading account? Hands, hands up. What's the reason why we have to perform the trading account? Is everybody there? Hello? Uh, can somebody say hello, just to ensure that I haven't lost you? Just one person, please. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, you might as well go ahead, Virginia, and give me an answer. Thank you. Why uh, do, you, do we have to perform or do the T account for the trading account? I think we, we have to do the, tea, the trading account if we want to determine the surplus or the loss of the NGO or the bars, something like that. Yeah, not necessarily, not necessarily, but you're there. You're there because you jumped one step to your answer. Any try? Oh, Virginia, are you Joseph? Yes. OK, no, I can see today you changed your name. <laughs> okay. That's OK. Any try? All right. We do the trading account simply because we need to determine how much is the gross profit for the bar or for the NGO. That's the main reason behind that, OK? Remember, you calculate the gross profit under the normal financial statements that we we know, me and you, and we just don't do the trading account, basically. We do what's called the, uh, the cost, of, uh, cost of sales calculations. I think we had that kind of a question yesterday in one of uh, the assignments questions. Right, uh, here is the questions 
uh, let's have a look at the questions all together. It says the following pertains to Project Love for the year and 31st December 2020. Trial balance is as follows, right? In the buy inventory on the 1st of January 2020, it's 6,000 rent. I'm just going to skip these pages and look at the required because it's, it's important for you to. And by the way, if you didn't know, those that they would be doing post grad um, in the College of Accounting Science, when you write exams, or when you write tests, you are given um, you are given the question first, and later on, that's where you get the required. So you need to establish. Um, you need to assume or establish what kind of questions would be um, would be examined or required of you to do. Unlike when you do your first year, second year, and third year. First year, second year, and third year, we all know you get the question paper, including the questions and the required at the same time, which is you guys are very lucky in that. So. In, in, in post-grad, we go the opposite way. You get the questions and later get the required part. Right, um, first one is trading account. And the second one is the membership fees account. And the third one is the statement of receipts and payments. And the fourth one is the income and expenditure statement. Sorry my for my wrong handwriting. Sorry, oh, my wrong spell. And the fifth one is the fund account. Everybody happy? Let's go back to the questions and see the transaction that goes through to the, okay. We're gonna read the questions and then you tell me where does it go, okay? And then at the end of the questions, I'm gonna put, if it goes to the membership fees, I'm gonna put membership fees account. And then later on, we're going to reconcile those amounts. Okay, let's have a look at uh, these questions. Right, sorry. Uh, Right, trial balance is as follows. We've got a buy inventory on the 1st of January. What do you guys think? I'll pick you up. We've got the bar purchases, we've got the bar sales, and then we've got the bar wages, and then we've got the general expenses, and then we've got the asset cost. Okay, and then we've got the areas and insurance and the uh, salaries and wages. Um, my apologies here. I think I didn't put the amount, but we'll assume that amount when we get there. And then the membership fees are uh, received. It's 99,000 with the donation received, the advance membership on the 1st of January with the maintenance of the building, areas membership fees, and there we've got the Dinana fund and the interest income from double HP bank at eight, sorry, 6%. Right, first transaction, um, first, uh, what is it? first line item under your trial balance, where do you think that goes? Buy inventory on the 1st of January, 2020. Hello, can you, is it possible so that you can open up a receipt and payment uh, statement? So I can do that. So okay, cool. No problem. I'll do that. Uh, we're doing, uh, the, you said the statement of receipts and payments. I can do this. Uh, receipts and payments. Okay. Like this. All right. Or do you want me to also say, let me do this. My apologies for that. Uh, let me say, my number one is my trading account. My number two will be my receipts and payments and uh, payments. Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna ask you guys to think of uh, what is required of you to, the my number three is, I think is the membership fees account, right? Membership fees. And my number four is, uh, Okay, I've got number one as mem a trading account, membership fees account. Okay, now I get it. Uh, right, and then number three, it's my receipts and payments. Number four is 
um, the income and expenditure. Number five is the fund account. There we go. Okay. I think everybody else is sorted now, and then we can start with our question. Let's have a look. Buy inventory, quickly. Buy inventory with an amount of uh, 6,000. No hands. No hands. Okay, 6799, please go ahead. I'm not sure who this is. Uh, I think it will go to trading account as our opening balance. Trading account. Okay. She says trading account. Anybody with uh, a different opinion? She says the opening balance. Any suggestions? Anyone with a different view? Right, six seven double nine. Thank you so much. What's your name? My name is Diana. All right, Diana. I think it's nice. It will be nice if I can call you with the name. Right, then that means we move on, and uh, we're gonna have the next line, which is the bar purchase. Diana, please come again. Seems like you. Uh, I still gonna go to trading account as a trading account. Under the purchases. Uh, there's no need for you to actually look at your study guide. Well, maybe because of uh, you will be writing the exam under it's an open book, right? So yeah, maybe it might worth it. So I've got 55,000 rand of the purchase. So you all agree that it's going to be 55. Any different view? Any different view on the hand? Any different view? Okay, there we go. Right, we've got the bar sales. Where do you think this uh, would go? Bar sales. You credit the trading account. With the sales? Yes. Okay. Righty, uh, let me see sales. Bar sales, we've got 200,000 rent. Let's see. And uh, let's have a look at this one. We've got the bar wages. Bar wages, where does it go? Quickly on the bar wages. Bar wages. Um, Diana? Uh, 6799. I think you said your name is Diana, right? Yes, uh, that would be our expenses in trading account. In the trading account. Yes. Uh, Diana says that there will be an expense under trading account. Any suggestions? Uh, can you try? Can you record it in um, receipt and payments under payments? Under payments. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me do this. All right. Joseph says under the receipts and payments, and Diana says under the payments. Any 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 suggestions? People, you can't go quiet. You need to be active. Are you scared here? Because it's our last day? Because it's our last day? Mpumi, Zanela, Honzi, Leah, I don't see your hands. Juliet. Okay. Um, let me see. Diana, you still want to suggest? Or are you okay? I'm confused, so I just want to wait. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, the time around, I'm going to agree with uh, Joseph. Let's see if we'll get it wrong. We get it right. Uh, it's an amount of 9,000 Rand, right? 9,000. It will go there. Okay, let's have a look at uh, our general expenses. Anybody, quickly? Diana, do you want to give it a try? I can see your hand. Uh, if your hand is still raised, I'm going to call your name. All right, thank you. Any suggestions? Where are people here, guys? Why are you so quiet? We can still okay. record it again under the payments. Uh, under the payments. Uh, yes, in receipt and payment statement. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. General expenses. Right. The amount is uh, thirty six thousand rand. Right. Okay, let's see the right. Uh, we've got the asset cost here for the equipment is thirty thousand rand and the vehicle is thirty three thousand rand and the furniture is uh, twenty eight thousand rand. Okay, we've got we're gonna jump that one. We've got the areas insurance with uh, on the 1st of January with an amount of 500 rand. And then we've got the salaries and wages. And uh, we've got the membership fees received. We've got the donation received. We've got the advanced membership fees for the maintenance of the building and the areas fees received. Okay. Look, my mistake when I create these questions, I did not, um, what is it? Show you on which additional information does it fall under? Okay, but we'll just go and check where does it was where, where does it fit. But if you look at an asset cost, um, let's all have a look at number six. I can I, I hope you all see. Can you all see? Yes. All right, that's good. All right, we need to determine the depreciation based on this two. And then they say that under number six, it says the depreciation must be accounted as follows: furniture under the reducing balance method at 5%, and the vehicle is on cost at 20%, and the equipment is at 15% on the reducing balance method. Right, let's check out that quickly. What do you do? Uh, I think there's an additional information with regards to the furniture. It says that furniture at, at a cost of 3,000 rand, let's all tend to nine, additional information number nine. Right? Uh, furniture at a cost of 3,000 rent and its accumulated depreciation of 900 rent on the 1st of January to or sold for 1,000 on the 1st of July and the transaction must still be recorded. Okay, looking at number seven again, uh, it, it's actually quite linked to uh, the equipment. We've got the residual value for an amount of uh, 10,000 rent. Okay. We did uh, the asset realization on a Monday. We did the depreciation calculations on this kind of transactions here. And I expect you guys to lead me on this one because we did the entire set of the depreciation, which it was quite bulky. Right, so at this point in time, I'm not expecting everybody to get lost because we specialized with this on a Monday this week. Okay. Anybody quickly to help me? Okay, let's see. Depreciation calculations, people. Hello? Hello? I don't see your hands up. Or do you want to see the question? Yes, can you please uh, increase the, the the size and also go bold so that you can see properly? Okay. Um, can you see that it's getting complicated now if I increase it? But can you see the second part, which is the side? On the second no. side? No. Round. Okay, can everybody else see this side? Please do answer me because I know um, Joseph sometimes has um, her own problems, I think with her, with her own PC there. 
Do you, are you all comfortable on this? Sorry. Are you all comfortable on this side? I can see everything. You can see everything. You can see everything. Yes. OK, thank you so much for that. Uh, Joseph, I think uh, the same problem that you had yesterday, it's continuing. Can you see that? Maybe, but I've changed the PC, but it's fine. It's OK. All right. Um, if you want to partake, I can read the information for you and then you can read me after, afterwards. Let's start on six. Uh, furniture is on the reducing balance method at 5%. Right? Looking at the cost of the furniture here, it says it's 28,000 rand. Oh. But they didn't give us the the the. the opening balance of depreciation so that we can reduce it with the the cost price of the 28,000 rand. How can we reduce it then? I, I oh. understand. That. And I, I mentioned that, that sometimes they might not give you the accumulated depreciation. And all you have to do is just mention the accumulated depreciation as a zero. OK. Yes. Now, then, uh, then. Unless if uh, you said you came in late on a Monday in the classroom, right? I missed the Monday one. OK, not a problem. I guess now you've got an idea. OK, any different hand? Or, yes, um, sir. Uh, sir, on bullet number nine, I can't see it. I can't see properly, but it says finished cost of is 30,000 and accumulated depreci depreciation of 900 on the 1st of January 2020 was sold for 1,500 on the 1 July 2020 and the transaction must still be recorded. I think there is our answer on the bullet number nine of, of accumulated depreciation. Okay. Um, tell me what must I do? It is the bullet for the depreciation. You're right. This is the additional information with regards to the uh, accumulated depreciation or the sold, um, what is it, furniture. Can you, can somebody give me the, the what is it, the calculations of the accumulated depreciation? Okay, let me try and lead the way. Um, how much is the cost? We're looking at the cost, right? The cost, the original cost of the furniture is 28,000 rand. And this is how you're going to do. You'd say furniture with a cost of 28,000 rand. Then you minus a zero because I accumulated depreciation, it's zero. And then obviously you're going to have your equal sign of 28,000 rand. Then you multiply this by five. You multiply and this by five, right? And you divide it by 100. You say five divided by 100, OK? Um, somebody with a calculator quickly help me there. Let me get my calculator in the meantime as well. So 28 of five divided by 100. How much are you getting? 1,400. 1,400. OK, I hope everybody's getting the same amount as uh, Joseph. It's 1,400 Rand, OK? So remember, out of the furniture, there was the other one that were actually sold. There was uh, the furniture that was sold, which is going to be uh, depreciation for the sold, OK? It's 3,000 Rand on the cost, and then U minus. How much is the accumulated depreciation there? 1.5, sorry, 900. OK, you say 900, and then you multiply this by what? Multiply this by, by five, five by 100. Divided by 100. One, how much are you getting? 3,000, multiply by five divided, sorry, it's 3,000 minus 900, multiply by five divided by 100. 3,000 minus 
900, multiply by 5, you divide it by 100. I'm getting 105. Is everybody getting 105? Yes. Okay. This would be your total. Actually, here we made an error. It's supposed to be 29, and then your minus 3,000 rand is the cost, right? And you're going to minus the eight accumulated depreciation, which is 900. And then you multiply this by five, you divide it by 100. Okay. And uh, you're going to say 28,000, you minus 3,000, and you minus your 900. And you multiply this by five, you divide it by 100. Then you've got, I've got 1205. Do you all get that? One, two, zero, five. Right, do you all understand why did I say 28,000 minus 3,000 3, minus 900 multiplied by 5 divided by 100? Do you all get that? No, say I don't. Okay, let me no, go back. No, I don't back. get that. Okay, no, it's fine. Uh, the original cost of the furniture is 28,000 rent. Okay. So what you're gonna do is say cost minus the cost of uh, one of the furnitures that has been sold, which is 3,000 Rand, right? To get the adjusted cost. It's gonna give you an amount of, I think it's 25,000. And you need to look at the accumulated depreciation. Remember the method is, uh, is the reducing balance method, depreciation. Okay. Then on, on the accumulated depreciation, you're going to have the accumulated depreciation from the 28,000 rand. We've got, it's a male. We don't have the accumulated depreciation. And then you minus the accumulated depreciation for the sold asset, which is 900 rand, okay? Then that means you are left with how much? 900 rand. Do you agree with that? This will be your final answer. And then you're gonna push this to 25,000. Okay. Right. Obviously, this would be the under the brackets because it's a minus. Okay. Then what you do is you determine how much is the carrying value. Okay. So the carrying value, carrying value would be is about twenty four thousand one hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Twenty five thousand minus nine hundred, it will be twenty four thousand one hundred. And you continue by multiplying this by to get the depreciation. You multiply this by, say, 24,100, multiply by 5, you divide it by 100, then you're getting 12,05. You all get it? Yes. We can say my depreciation. The depreciation would be uh, 24,100. 100. You multiply this by 5, you divide it by 100. You're getting um, 1205. 12 okay, that's your depreciation. This is the carrying value. The 24,100 is the carrying value. Okay, as I've told you before, that this would be the carrying value at the beginning. Okay, this is when you are doing the statement of financial position. And this will be the depreciation during the year. Okay, or oh, let me say in the current year. Happy? And I've also mentioned or told you that whenever there's a disposal of an asset, meaning that we need to create what's called the realization account. You remember that? Those that they were in the class on a Monday, I'm sure you guys would remember that. Do you remember that? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. All right, then this is how you're going to treat your, let's say you want to do the T account for the furniture. Okay, this is not part of the required anyway, but I'm just gonna remind you of the cost would be on which side, debit, with an amount of, I think it's 28,000, 28,000 rand, and you're going to have the realization. Remember that. Out of how much? 3,000 rand. 
Okay, we sold one of the furnitures with an amount of 3,000 rent. And that means, because it's called, it has to be under the bracket, and you're going to have an adjusted cost, adjusted cost with an amount of 25 rand. Can you see that? Can you see where it lands us? Happy? Hello? Come on, people. Um, we're going to look at things like this, additions, which is a nail. Nothing under the need additions means that you're going to close off with 25,000 rand. Going to close off with 25 rand. Happy? But right, let's move on to the next assets, which is vehicles. Vehicles is actually on course the 28%. What do you do? Anybody quickly who can do the depreciation? Um, tell you what, if, if you think you're going to write the exam on Thursday next, next week, I, I assume you guys are writing on a third, and you expect the depreciation not to be part of your exam, you're lying to yourself. You're definitely lying to yourself. You need to know that, and you need to understand the, pro, uh, the process with regards to your depreciation. If you're going to go silent on that one, you're going to have a problem on Thursday. Believe it or I not. I can try. You try. Please do try. Vehicle at the cost price of the 2000 times 20% okay, uh, divided uh, just by... A moment, just a moment for me, eh? Yes. So it's the cost of... Is it 20,000? 22,000. 22,000. 32,000 32, mm -hmm. times 20% divided times by 100. Divided by 100, like this. Okay, 32,000. How much are you getting there, Joseph? 20 uh, divided I'm by 100. Okay. 6,400. Okay, I'm getting the same amount. Okay, so the... The depreciation would be 6,400 rent under the vehicle. Is there anybody else who doesn't understand this part? Or can I move on? Can I move on? All right. Equipment at 15% on the reducing balance method. Um, do you want to take it a shot, Joseph? Um, the cost is 30,000 rent, no accumulated depreciation. So the process, the same process would be followed, right? Yes. Sorry, sorry, sir, to disturb yes. you. Right. No, no uh, problem. On bullet number seven, I can't, I can't see properly, sir. You can't see uh, properly. Yeah, okay, just, you just can. Yes. Yes, I can read it, but um, just a moment. It, yeah. Okay, just a moment for me. I just want to find out from Johan if I can increase the size here because. It, it's a, but let me do this. Let me quickly do this. Uh, let's see if it'll work. Um, can you see properly now? Yes, it's better. I uh, know, not like this previous year. It's better like that. Yeah. Yes, it's better now, it's, sir. It's not way this. better. Yes, it is better. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's see. Uh, we're going to look at the additional information from number one, right? Right. It says that the equipment is at 15% on reducing balance method. You can see that, right? You're fine with that? Yes. All right. Uh, uh, the that she cannot see clearly on that. Maybe she can partake on this one. What's your take? Sir, so I said on bullet number seven. Number it said seven. the ratio is the ratio value of the equipment amount to ten thousand. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh say so we don't minus this ten thousand to the to the cost. Uh, you <laughs> I <tell>. think <laughs> I think so. I'm going to say 
um, the cost of the equipment, the 30,000 minus the 10,000. Yes. yes. Minus the the ten thousand, and Plus then 10, yes, and then we we times fifteen percent or or we say fifteen over hundred. Fifteen divided by hundred. Yes. Okay, because equipment is on fifteen percent. Yes. Yeah. What? Um, any suggestions? Or can I close it down? Any suggestions? Uh, let me see your hands if you do have some raise. Okay, some hands up. Minus 10. Right. And how much is your how much is your how much is your final figure there? I'm getting 3,000 rent as the depreciation. You're getting the same amount? Yes, I'm getting the same amount. Okay. Everybody else, I would assume that you guys are getting the same amount. Okay. Then that's fine. And uh, let's go back to the questions. I think we are done with the depreciation, right? We're done with the depreciation, right? Okay, we've got the, um, okay, we've accounted the general expenses, the bar wages, then we've got the areas insurance on the 1st of January with an amount of 500 rand. Okay. So let's look at for the additional information with regards to the insurance. What? Anybody who's seeing the additional information with regards to the insurance? It's bullet number eight. Bullet number eight. eight. It's insurance. Okay, it says the insurance premium amounts to 3,000 rand paid during the current year. And it, it is found, sorry, um, excuse my, 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 my wrong spells. Okay, it is found out that it was, uh, I mean, actually I was trying to say that it was established against, the, it was debited against the general expenses, which include an amount of 1,200 rand in the prepaid insurance premium. What do you think? We, what we, is can, we can make, let me, I can try. We can yes. go back to the bullet that talks about the general expenses and general then expenses. you minus, you minus the 3000 rand of insurance mm -hmm. prepaid uh, premium. And then yeah. now that you, we can calculate from the 3,000 rand of premium insurance to minus 1,000 rand to 1,200 rand of insurance uh, paid prepaid for okay. the, then you will have the actual amount of 1,800 of insurance that's been used for the current year. Okay, so sorry, sorry, uh, Joseph, uh, let's start over. You said I, I must take 32,000 from the general expense, right? Yes. 36,000 and then I minus 3,000 rent for the and then we have the correct amount for general expense for 33,000 okay so we've got an equals of 33,000 that's what you say yes then we take the 3,000 of insurance prepaid premium okay. minus 1,200 uh, prepaid yeah, it's a, a prepaid insurance to have should the actual to should have, have the minus the 1.2 yes from the 3000 from the 3000 rent yes from the from the 3000 of uh, the insurance this one yes all right let me just do it this way are you saying that i must just do this is that what you are suggesting that i must do uh, minus 1.2 like this And I guess we're going to have my calculations gives me 1.8. Yes, 1. 8. yes, we we'll have 1.8. Can you we're please go to... back to the, the question of insurance to see how much is the 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 opening balance of that bullet that talks about insurance? Okay. The, the area. Eight. 
The insurance premium amounts to 3,000 rand paid during the year, and it found that it was debited against the general expenses, which include an amount of 1.2 in the prepaid expense. Right, then you want me to go away? To that bullet that says the area of insurance is for, okay, 500 rand. Here's you can take out, yes, we can minus, 800, 1,800 minus 500 of area, area of insurance for the previous year. Then okay. we will have the current insurance for 1,300. Basically, you say prepaid? The prepaid is for the, ne the next, I'm sure, for the next current, the next, car the next year for 1.2. Minus the current, that's what you're saying. Yes. So it's uh, 1.2 minus 500. No, it's the 1.8 for the current year minus the 500 of the area. Minus 500. Yes. Okay. Let's see, and then you get how much? 1.3 is the total, right? Yes. yes. That's okay. all. Cool. I don't know if I'm correct. You are actually on the right stuff. You are actually on the right track. We see the current insurance. And thank you so much for the for the for the for the, for the try. Okay, um, let's have a look at number. Okay, we deal with insurance, salaries, and wages. Um, let's assume the salaries and wages amounts to because I didn't put the amount here. My apologies. Let's say it's three thousand rent. Where do you think this goes? Quickly. Where do you receipt think this will go? Receipt and payment. Payment. And payment. Okay. Under the payment. Salaries yes. and wages. Okay. Let's see. Salaries and wages. Uh, all right. So I said it's to be assumed to be 3,000. Let's see the other one. We've got the membership fees received of 99,000 rent. Membership fees received. Receipt, receipt and payment under receipt. Under the receipt and payment. Yes, under receipt. The statement of receipt and payments and I put it under receipt. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I got ninety-nine thousand. Okay, let's see the other one. Uh, it says uh, we've got the donation received. I would assume that is amount of nine thousand rent. Can we deal with that? Where does it go? Under the receipts and payments or the income and expenditure account. Under the receipts. Is it fine if I put it here? I just, or should I put it under the income and expenditure or should I put it, put it in both? Should I put it in both or should I put it under your income and expenditure? Quickly. Any suggestions? Under both. Uh, just hold on a second for me, please. Uh, my good people, I'm back. 
Sorry, as you were saying, somebody was just trying to give me an answer. Hello? Hello, say under both. Under both? Yes, yes. Population received. Okay, and then now we've assumed that it's an amount of 3,000 rands. Let's have a look at this. E grant. 3,000 rand. Okay, um, just before I go further with, okay, somebody said, okay, um, Joseph, sorry, I'm going to put it under the income and expense. I think I didn't open up that account, but it's okay. I'll put it there. I'm just concerned a little bit, though. I just want to see. Uh, Leah, are you there today? I can't, I can't see your participation. And Paulina, I can't see your participation here as well. And uh, who else was there yesterday? Mbumi. Mbumi, Mbumi, and uh, Matapa. Razor, Poshia, why are you guys so quiet today? Polina, what's happening? Zanele, Virginia, you guys are so quiet today. What? Pule, where are you? Uh, Pule is actually not here. Okay, you said a donation received, right? Under the incomes and expenditure with an amount of 3,000 rent. Because I don't understand. People are so quiet today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know whether you have prepared for this question or it's just completely out of your understanding. Help me out there. Okay, we, we jumped the membership. Okay, membership fees received. We have uh, recorded that under the receipts and payments. Right, let's have a look at this membership. Advanced membership, anyone quickly? Advanced membership fees. Advanced member, I missed those hands that were going up yesterday. I missed them even today. Advanced membership fees. I wanna see some hands here, guys. Hands, hands, hands. Virginia. Thank you, thank you. Zanele, uh, Virginia, can I post you for a moment? Let me have Zanele. Zanele, you can go ahead, please. Um, so on the bullet, on the number, on the bullet number five. Bulletin number five. Yes, yeah, it talks about each member paid an, an intense fee of 100 rand and was established that the interest fees received of 7,000 were erroneously. Erroneously, my apologies. Included with the amount. I, I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to try. Uh, I think some, uh, Because here it says that the advanced membership is 22,000. Okay. Then, um, sorry, the Zanella, addition, okay. Zanella, can, yes. Can I, can, I, can I pause you for a moment, please? Just a moment. We'll continue with that. Um, my apologies for that. Zanella, please go ahead. Um, Zanella, I'm back. You can go ahead, please. Hello, Zanella. Hello. Right. Can you guys hear me? It seems like we've lost Anela here. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, Virginia, you can take it a shot. Sorry, Zanella, about that. I hope you do hear me. 
Uh, you can go ahead, Joseph. I think the advanced membership can be put on in the income and expenditure statement under income. Income and expenditure statement. Yes. Okay. Um, I've got a question for you, though. Why do you think it should go under the income and expenditure statement? Because it is an income. They've because paid income. they've paid in advance. Right. OK, if I say that um, you paid me the rental, of, say I'm a landlord and you pay me the rental of uh, 6,000 rent for the next coming three months, OK? Do you think I should record that as my incomes or should I record that as my liabilities or? I think it can be as a liability. Or does it go both? On both sides? Yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Let's have a quick uh, look at the. You said the advance, right? Yes. The advance. Okay. The advance is 22,000 rand. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. And she's saying that we should put 22,000 rand here. Okay. Uh, Zanella, if you do hear me, I'd like to hear the try again, please. Uh, sir, is my net, yes, sir, is, I can't hear you properly. I think it's my network. Oh, so sorry about that. I, I try I try to find a right place to to connect. But but we hear you. We hear you. Uh, you quite can nice. hear me. We can hear but you. But I very can't nice. hear you properly because you is break. It? Yes. OK, um, let me tell you this. Give it a shot and then we will listen. We're not going to intervene on your conversation with us. You can just give it a shot. OK, it seems like Zanella is more comfortable in uh, taking a step back, but it's OK. Anybody? All right, uh, I'm seeing Leah. Thank you so much. Leah, you can go ahead, please. OK. Um... For me, uh, the number five, I thought like, I, I think that it should go to membership fees account. I beg your pardon? I didn't get that part. Uh, I was thinking that um, entrance fees must be recorded on the membership account. The uh, membership fees must be recorded under the membership fees account. Entrance fees. Are the we not fee. on transition number five? OK, where well it says each member paid an entrance fee of 1,000, and it was established that the entrance fee received of 7,000 and were erroneously included in the membership fees account. OK, um, this transaction or this line item on five, it should clearly state to you that membership fee is not part of, sorry, entrance fee is not part of your membership fees because they included that by error. Oh, OK, now I understand. They, they included that by error in the membership fees account. And by the way, Membership fees, it's sorry, entrance fee, it's never part of the membership fees account. Never ever make that, that mistake. The only transaction or the account that is affected by the entrance fee is the accumulated fund. Happy? Okay. okay. No, I'm um, so, happy. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the clarity. Right. No problem. So, okay, let me just further clarify that when you do that, uh, the T account for the entrance fee, what you have to do is on the credit side of the entrance fee, you put accumulated fund, and then you put that figure. And then when you do the accumulated fund, on the debit side of the accumulated fund, you put entrance fee, and then you put the amount. And that's how you disclose it. Make sense? Never ever make that mistakes to say that the entrance fee goes through to your, to your membership fees account. It's never part of that at all. All right, and then we've got the Dinana fund. The interest income uh, for double HP bank at seven, uh, what is it? Six uh, percent. Let's have a look at these uh, transactions where it says that the interest income of uh, double HP bank. Let's all go back. Let's all go back to twelve. The interest income of double H bank P bank was received in respect of the Dinana fund. Can you see the correlation in between the two? 
Well, we've got the interest received as part of the income, but it was purely received due to the special fund that we made with Double HP Bank, Double HP Bank, by Dinana. Okay. Well, this boils back to the issue that you remember when I explained that you, when you create a special fund account, it means that there's a certain objective or certain aspect that you need to meet, right? That's why you're actually, uh, what is it? Opening the special fund account. The issue now, because you know the principle behind this whole thing, it's how do I go about recording it? All right, we're gonna leave that one for now because I think you guys just um, came across this for, for today. I'm gonna go to the additional information quickly. Let's have a look at number one. It says the membership fees amount to 500. I would like us to actually uh, do the membership fees calculations. Okay, because why am I doing that? Um, Joseph, I need you to be very careful when it comes to the membership fees account. When you do the membership fees account, especially if you are required to do the receipts and the payments or the income and expenditure account, what you have to do is you need to calculate the membership fees account as part of an adjustment. Okay. And then after calculating that, that's when you're going to make your own transfers in terms of the disclosure. Make sense? Yes. Unless if they give you the membership fees figure without any additional information to be adjusted by, then you can just take that amount as it is and transfer it through to wherever it's supposed to be suited. It can be the income and expenditure account, or it can be the, the receipts and the payments account. But if the information is given like this on what we are doing, it means that you need to adjust your membership fees account. Okay? Determine your legs in the credit and determine, sorry, determine your credit legs and your debit legs. And then you will be able to get the right answer. Am I clear on that one? I, I hope everybody else has just heard me. All right? Let's do the membership fees account and let's let me test on how far do you understand it. And then we'll see on we'll see on how did I dispose my 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 uh, what is it my membership fees tea account. Additional information number one says that the membership fees amount to five hundred per uh, per member per annum, and the club had two hundred members during the current financial year. What is your take on this, guys? What do you understand about this line transaction? What do you understand about this? You you open up a membership fees account. Membership fees account. Mem you paid it with the, the amount yeah. of the, the fees by doing 500 times 200, the number of members. And then you, you get 100,000. Is it 200 multiplied by? Uh, 500. 500 rand. Multiply by 500. How much did you get there? How much is 200 or 500? 100,000. 100,000 rand. Okay. There we go. Uh, that's uh, Joseph's view. Anybody with a dispute? Anybody with a different uh, understanding? Any view? All right. It means people are agreeing with you, uh, Joseph. Let's have a look at number two. Membership fees amount to 700 per member per annum. Did we? Uh, I think I made a mistake in here. Membership fees amount to 700 per member per annum. I gave you two different figures, right? I said 500 as well as uh, 700 rand per annum. Okay, since well, we've used the 500 rand, so it's 700. We're gonna skip the number two. Right, 6,000 membership fees were in arrears for the year and the 31st December 2019 and must be written off as recoverable. What do you guys think on that? What's your take on that? One? What's your take on that? Okay, let me see you as end is up. Uh, Rizal, please go ahead. 
I think. I think that six thousand will be recorded on the, the credit loss on the membership uh, FUSA account. It will go through to the uh, membership fees account as a credit loss. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for that. On which side? Um, on the credit side. Credit side. You want to tell me what? Do you have an idea as to why you're saying on the credit? I fully agree with what you're saying, but I need the base of your, I need your background base, basically. Uh, Zan Zanella, she says that the written of the credit loss, 6,000 rand should be on the credit side. Sorry, uh, Joseph, did you say that 10, 100,000 rand is on the debit or credit? Joseph? Credit. Credit. Yes, please. Okay. Let's see now. Um, Rizal doesn't have the backup to uh, answer, but I think um, we have to carry on now. Okay. Um, she advised that we have to put the 6,000 rent on the credit side as recoverable. During the current financial period, 25 new members joined the club. Twenty five new members join the club. Right. Uh, Rizal, please go ahead. Um as the the, 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 the member fees um is um five hundred, we're going to take twenty five multiply by five hundred. Twenty five multiplied by five hundred. Which side? Um, we put it on the debit side as an entrance fee. As? Um, new members entrance fee. Okay, actually, that's why I'm going. I'm having a problem. Um, entrance fee doesn't form part of your membership fee unless if we can use the new members. Yeah, it would make sense, but not entrance fee. Uh, okay. I, I just said that now. Now, okay, it's twenty five multiplied by hundred, and then we've got what two point five, right? Okay, she says that it's going to go through to the debit. And why is that? Okay, let's carry on. Um, each member paid an entrance fee of, this is where the problem is, and it was established that entrance fee receipt of 7,000 rand were erroneously included in uh, with the amount. Okay, then what do we do on this? Sorry, sir, we can't see the screen. Can you? Yes. Okay, no, it's fine. Let me do this. Is it better? No. Better? Which bullet is it? Is it better now? Mm -hmm. It's better, but which bullet is it? The question. Uh, it's bulletin number five. Yes, uh, it's, it's fine now. Is it fine? Do you want yes. to take a part? Do you want to partake on it? Each member paid an entrance fee of 100 rent, and it was established that the entrance fee received for 7,000 rent were erroneously included in the amount for the membership fees received as such. And in accordance with the constitution of the club, the entrance fee must be capitalized. What's your take? All right, let me check who's available for me. Any ha any hands up? Any hands up? All right, I just told you that the entrance fee is not doesn't form part of your membership fees account, right? First and foremost, you need to establish what is a membership fees account. We know it's an income account for the car, uh, for the for the club, right? It increases on which side? The credit side. For you to take out the, at the entrance fee out of the membership fees account. Which side would you go? Debit side. Debit side. Okay, that's how you deduct the uh, the entrance fee under your. Uh, 
Okay, so it's going to be on the debit side with an amount of 7,000 rent. Is there anything else that we have to put under the membership fees? Right, did we tackle three? 6,000 rent of the membership fees were in arrears at the year, okay, 31st December 2019. It must be written off as irrecoverable. I think we put it there, right? Somebody gave us 6,000 rent on the credit side. You all remember that? All right, then uh, it means that we're going to look at our credit leg, which is greater than our uh, debit leg. We've got 106,000 rent. Then we went to minus 9,500. Um, how much do you think that is? 106 minus 9.5. I've got 96,500. And then what, what, what do you think this would be? Sorry, sir. Come again. I didn't hear the question. Oh, sorry about that. I'm saying that your credit leg is greater than your debit leg with an amount of 96,500. Then what do you think uh, this would be recorded under your balance, uh, sorry, under your membership fees account? I think income and expenditure. Income and expenditure. Income yeah. and expenditure. Tell you what. Um, I just like the logic behind how you think, but uh, I'm just concerned about the way you delay things or the way you uh, record your transactions. Uh, simply because transactions that fall under your membership fees account, you take them directly to your receipts and payments and income and expenditure account, okay? And now you've determined the calculations of the membership fees account, uh, and then you are having what's called the income and expenditure account is your balance carried down. Do you get where I'm coming from, uh, particularly you, Joseph? Remember, we had pieces of transactions where you have just uh, specifically take them out of the transactions themselves, and then you move them directly to their receipts and payments, and as well as their income and expenditure, so income and expenditure accounts. But now you are determining what's called the income and expenditure under the membership fees account. You heard me? Yes. Joseph? Yes. Okay, so this amount that you are determining now, why don't you say, why don't you take it through to the receipts and payments? Why don't you take it to the receipts and payments? We must take it to the receipts and payments since we have balanced the, the mem membership fees account okay so are you saying that i must um, include it here under your under the receipts and payments so is it going to be under the incomes or is it going to be under uh it, it is going to be under the income other incomes yes okay membership fees would you would you agree with me if i can put it this way I don't see so. Uh, okay, not a problem. I will do this. Uh, just want to check my calculations correctly. It should be 96,500. Can you all see? Can you all see, Joseph? Please point it with the, your case. I, I don't see where you are. This is the page where I am. Please come again. The information that we see on the screen is the one that is given the bulletin 5678 and nine and as are required 
uh, trading account and also uh, we don't see the one that we are doing the completion. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm struggling to hear you. I'm struggling to hear you. The screen that we are seeing is the one of the bulletin three until 10 and the one that is, is making the request, we don't see the one for the calculation. Okay. Uh, can, can you all hear the person who is speaking now? I'm struggling to hear, I think it's Juliet. But Juliet, I'm struggling to hear you from my side. On my side, sorry. Even to my side also. Did you struggle to, uh, yeah, I think your reception isn't, isn't quite clear, um, Juliet. I'm struggling to hear you, to be honest. Okay, it's fine. Or was it, was it Pumelele? Was it Pumele, Pumelela, Pumelela, Sikosana? Uh, sir, can you hear me? I can hear you, I can hear you, but have you been hearing me all this time? Yes, we can hear you, but what we're struggling with is that we see the screen questions. We do not see the screens where you are writing out the answers. Is it? Uh, can't you see yeah. this part? No, we don't. We don't, we just have the questions. But can't you see this part? No. No, oh, sir. Uh, just a moment. Can't you see? Can you see this part? There's nothing. No, sir. There's nothing. It's still on the question. Do you still see the question? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the questions. Um, let me see. Just a moment, please. Uh, just a moment for me. Uh, I'm going to put you on mute. Uh, let me see if I can find. Um... Johan, can you hear me? Johan? Hello, Johan. Okay, let me stop sharing and then let me share my tray again. Um, all right, no, I think I'm, I'm gonna win now. Let me bring this. Can you see this? You should be seeing yeah. now. Yeah. Can you see this? Yeah. Mr. Skosana? No, so, uh, okay, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yes, yes. Is it far? It took a while to look at me. Yes. Uh, I think it Just, was um, just, just it was please the me a little bit. Just try, just try to zoom in a little bit, so so it's a little bit clearer. No, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll zoom it plus a little bit. But can you see this page now? It's a different one. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Yes. Can you see this? Yes. One? Yes. 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 See this. All right. But are you comfortable, or do you want me to? Switch? Can you please just increase the zoom? Uh, should I zoom it up? Yes. Yes. Like this. Okay. Is it okay now? No. Not yet. Is it okay? No. Uh, not yet. I think not I think yet. when people also, uh, it's not yet. It's not coming. It'll take a while to load, guys. I think just be patient as well. No, it, it should can come. Can anyone like zoom on their side? Because I can zoom from my side and see clearly. No, that's fine. Okay. I just want to. I just want to do something quickly. You should be able to see it now, right? Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes we can see. Okay. Yes. No, it's fine. I think it's the adjustment on my side. Basically, there's a button that I have to press before I can pop up the, the screen. That's why it's taking a bit of a time. But uh, I got it right now. Okay, but uh, can you see this part? Is everybody seeing this part? Everybody seeing this part? People are gone. Because if, if you don't tell me what you are not seeing or what you're seeing, then I won't be able to can continue. Can Which you part are you referring to? It's, it's the question Which part. Which part are you referring to? It's the question part. We, I see, I see the membership 
it's received uh, with the amount, so I'm not sure. And the bar right. wages. Okay, let me do this, just a moment. Um, this is the part I'm talking about. You know how she be able there to yet. It's not there yet, maybe it's still coming. This part? Okay. The questions, yes. The questions, yes. Okay, I think it's just uh, being a bit slowly there. All right. Seems like we've uh, cleared all the transactions now, so let's rectify all the errors that we, we had. Okay, can you see my calculations, where I made my calculations? Unclear? Right. No. Here, you know, can you see this part, the trading account part? Let's do no. this. Okay. Um, trading account part. I think I brought the wrong, the wrong one. Can you see this part? Yes. Can you see this part? Opening balance. Yes. Okay. We see the trading account sales, opening balance and purchases. All right, no, it's fine. I just want us to actually, because time is not gonna be on our side, I just want us to rectify the error that we, we had. So obviously you're going to have the closing balances here to determine the first part. The, trading account as part of the requirement okay so we're going to look at how much is the closing amount for the inventory can you see on number 10 it says bar inventory amounts to 15,000 rent on the 31st of december 2020 you see this part right no we don't see we don't see the question you don't see the question no you can see the question now right no no supposed to be yes. yes right so um can this part you can see as well right yes okay and this is what you do uh skosana please if you don't if you're failing to understand or if you don't see the answers here because you're the one who is saying that you can't see let me know okay so it's yeah, yeah. is it clear it's just, I've just got the screen with the questions. The screen where you're writing is, is not there. How do you know that I'm writing? Because I can, can hear you. you I can hear you typing. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So are you, you, still, are you, you, don't, you don't see why I like. you hear you typing. Yeah. Are you, not, are you not able to do a split screen, sir? Uh, maybe somebody can teach me something here. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost. What must I do on Teams app to show all the papers at once, all the pages at once? Where should I go? Where should I press? And what must I do, basically? Because I can see that Johan is actually off. You know, nobody helped me out a lot. Um, okay, can you see the screen now? Can you see my screen? You can see the question paper screen. You still see the question paper screen? Yeah, just the yeah. questions. Am I? You can't see the names of the other students on Teams. No. No, no you can see that at the bottom. Everyone's there. Everyone's at the bottom. Okay. Uh, in terms of main screen. No, in it's terms fine. of main screen. All right, let me just show you. On, okay, it's fine. I'll just. Um, what is it? I'll just go back and forth with opening up the pages. It's fine. But this is what I wanted to show you that my final gross profit part, this, this should be showing now, right? Can you see? Can you all see? Yes. 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 Right. This is what I did. I said 200,000 rand for my sales, plus the 6,000 rand of the opening, plus 55,000 rand for the purchases. And then I'm deducting 15,000 Rand for the closing stock. And I'm left with 246,000 Rand. So when I tie, can you all see that? Yeah. Yes. You can see, you can't hear my typing now. 
but you can hear me at the same time. <laughs> we still can't hear you, sir, but it's okay. Okay. So this is my gross profit that I've found. The first part is quite complete. Can you see that? Yeah. So if you come across the question where it says that, please, did, oh, what goes in your trading account? You know that you have to calculate what's called the gross profit. If you're given this kind of an information, with the, I mean, you are your, your level is a bit advanced as compared to the 1501 or the 1503 and stuff like that. You need to expect the questions to be a little bit intense. Not that they're not going to be like that easy, 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 as in easy, easy, easy. Right? I was surprised when you guys got one of the easiest multiple choice in the first semester. Um, I hope a lot of students made it because according to me, those that was the easiest exam paper I've uh, never I've ever came across. Okay, my gross profit of sixty thousand rand is incorrect. The correct one is uh, okay, fifteen thousand. This is the correct one. Can you all see this? What I'm highlighting? Yes. I'm gonna put it in red. So this is your uh, the gross profit. It will go through to your income and expenditure account. Are you all happy? Training account sorted. Sorry, sir. I still struggle. How did you get the 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 gross profit for two hundred and forty six thousand? All right. Can you see sales on top, Joseph? Yes. It's two hundred thousand rand. You um, I think yeah. No, I think your question is very relevant. Actually, I was supposed to get the cost of sales first. Sorry, sorry about that. Thank you for that. Cost of sales. But I think we're going to arrive at the same answer at the end of the day. So it will be, can we see 6,000 guys? It says 6,000. Yes. And then you plus it with 55,000. And then you mm -hmm. plus it, you minus 15,000 rand. You see that? Yeah. And then your cost of sales will be 46,000 rand. Happy? 46, yes. 46, Not 000. like that. Yes. Okay. And if you say, 46 and then you minus the sales. I think I've got the wrong cost profit. It should be 156 or something. 154. 154. Thousand, yes. uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. 154. Sorry, we've rectified that. This is a gross profit that will be reflected under the income and expenditure account. Everybody happy? Yes. Okay, I'll send you the proper solutions when I get when I get home for the incomes and expenditure account. I think time is going to kill us. But uh, can you see my membership fees account that I've just opened now? Membership fees account, can you see that? Right, now I'm going to share it. Here is the membership fees account. Can you all see that now? I know that I have to increase the size. Yes. Is it clear? No, please increase no. The, the zoom. Okay. Is it clear now? Is it yes. better? No, it's too much now. Reduce a little bit because Should you don't reduce it. Has on top. On top. Is yes. It fine? Now yes. It's fine. Is it everybody clear on this? This is too much now. Is what? Now it's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's fine now. I can continue with that. Okay, let's look at the debit and the credit of this and how they've actually reconciled um, this. Um, credit losses with an amount of 6,000 rand was actually on the credit side. Um, I think it was Anela who gave us that he has to move to the credit side, but he never, she, ne sorry, she never backed up. Why is it going to the credit side? Right, if you look at the credit losses there, basically, it was from the last financial period, and then obviously it was disclosed on the debit side, and then we have to make an adjustment to open it on the credit side from the last accounting period. Okay, and then uh, we had a certain number of uh, membership fees with, uh, let me see, how did we get the 9,000 rent? Let me go to the question quickly. You can see that membership fees received. We have received the membership fees with an amount of 99,000 rand. Can you see that? It was 100,000, so I don't know uh, where comes the 99,000. 
And this 99,000 brand is actually the one on the trial balance. It should be an opening balance under the membership fees account. Let me go to my membership fees quite correctly in the bank. Can you see that? Can you all see that? Can you all see my membership fees account? Yes. Right. Members made, uh, what is it? The, 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 there was a membership fees that was paid by the club. Obviously, because it's an income, it goes through to the income account. That's why we actually, we have received that amount of money. It went through to the bank. That's why it's actually written bank on your credit side. And we all know that the membership fees account is an income. Right? Uh, the prepaid membership fees, let's answer you, Joseph, because you said that it should come to the credit side and you're quite correct because we have received that income. Should we were required to do the statement of financial position, this was going to be transferred to the statement of financial position as your current liability. Happy? Uh, but uh, I still struggle. Why Why is the 99,000 coming from instead of 100,000? Oh, let me see. Let me show you. Can you see the trial balance? Let me do this. Yes, I can. we can see the membership fees account. Okay, let me go to the question on the trial balance. Uh, where is the question? I think it's this one. Can you see it now? Let's let's have a look here. It's your opening balance for the membership fees. Uh, membership fee received in the current year. Can everybody see the trial balance here? Yeah. Yes, we can. Right. Under yes. the salaries and wages, there's a membership fees received of 99,000 rent. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is how I can do it. I can still say no bank under this. Can you see the membership fees account? Or should I do? Can you see the T account for the membership fees? No. 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 Let, uh, let me share it with you quickly. Can you see it now? No. Yes. Yes. So this is where it reflects. You can still say balance brought down to show that is my opening balance instead of saying bank. Can you see my writing? Yeah. Yes. Then you put, you put it like this. Uh, your balance brought down. Then you put it like this. I'm looking for the delete. Then it will reflect like this. Can you see it? Yeah. OK, if you, Joseph, are being confused, this is from the trial balance. It's an opening balance with an amount of 99,000 rand. Yes. Are you happy? And, yes. And the right. income that the, 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 the members joined, they paid for the fees for the year for the 100,000 dollars, supposed also to be on the credit. Is it what? The, the 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 member fee membership fees for the the hundred thousand rand it was supposed to be also on the credit. Okay, and why is that? Because it is an income. It is an income that has not been received as yet. That's why we need to require an adjustment. That's why you see it on the income and expenditure account. Because out of what we have received, we still need to determine if it's what the advanced uh, membership fees account. Okay. Right. Look at it in this way. Um, you, uh, you and I and Zanele and uh, Skosana, we are forming a club, right? And then the agreement or the stipulation says that each member should pay 5,000 a year, right? But we haven't paid. But we know what is expected out of the fourth hours. We're going to say 5,000 and multiply by four, right? Mm -hmm. But the question is, did we receive that money? No. Uh, no. No. It will only show as and when we receive it. That's why it's actually under the income and expenditure at the moment. Okay, on the debit side. And then we have to determine the difference in between, okay, what we have actually received and what is actually due through to us. Make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. All right. Um, is everybody clear with the accrued income of the 10,000 rent? Uh, as well. 
Yes, yes. We didn't read the bullet. Do you want me to explain it, or are you all here? Please explain. Right. Um, you need to ask yourself, like, but why do we have the prepaid membership fees on the credit side? Because we have received that amount of money, right? Members paid in advance. We have actually received that amount of money, even though for the period of the time, it's actually not in there for their service. They just paid before the end of the financial period. Okay? That is why if the members can say, can you all hear me? It seems like my, my speaker is gone. Yes. Okay. That yes, is why. That is, okay. Yes. That is why some certain members even can say, we are withdrawing. We don't want to continue with the club. Then you'll be able to pay them. That's why I told you that this would be under your statement of financial position as a liability. It's the same as when you receive the normal income in advance. Happy? However, when you do the income statement under your other incomes, you can put that income received in advance as part of your incomes. But when you do the statement of financial position, you're going to transfer that under your statement of financial position, under your current liability, as your current liability. You mean this prepared membership needs to be transferred under the liability? If we were required to do the statement of financial position, it was going to go there. Okay. It was going to be here under the membership fees account, but the contract allocation account will be the statement of financial position. It was still going to be transferred through to the statement of financial position. Why? Because we haven't serviced our members, and if they want their money, it means that we are liable to pay them back. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Same, accrued, same applies to the accrued. Accrued income, it means that they are members who are still actually due to pay. Probably is for the previous accounting, uh, previous account, accounting period, okay, with an amount of 10,000. As soon as we have received that amount of money, then we can record that as our current year membership fees that has been. But at this point, we haven't received anything. And guess what? Under your statement of uh, financial position, this is where we realize what's called the debtors. We did this on Wednesday, guys. You're still due to pay. It means that you're owing the club. My explanation on this too, I just want to see you the relationship between the two or the reversing between the two. Why which one goes to the credit and why which one goes to the debit side? Is everybody happy? Yes. Okay. Look at how the, uh, look at how mem the membership fees uh, account, but look at how nice it is. Entrance fee, is everybody happy with it? Yeah. Everybody's happy with the 7,000 rent on the debit. Yes. Or do you want me to explain it? Let me explain it for just so in general. Uh, the reason why entrance fee is on the debit side of the membership fees account. First and foremost, membership entrance fee, it's never part of your membership fees account. It's an independent account. Okay. And then on the transaction, they told us, that it is included in the amount on the membership fees account. Since one is actually not part of the membership fees account, then that means we need to deduct that. And then how do you deduct that? We bring it to the debit side, simply because the membership fees account is an income account. It increases on the debit side, meaning that, sorry, the credit side, meaning that we need to deduct or reduce our credit side with 7,000 rand, okay? Or if, if you want to do it differently, this is how you can do it. This is how you can do it. You can still say 99,000 rent, and then you minus your 7,000 rent, and then you get, I think it's 92,000, if I'm not mistaken, right? You get 92,000 rent, and then this is what you're going to do. You deduct it here. You can see that, right? Can you see my typings? Yeah. Yes. Right. So it's still the same thing. You showed me that on my opening, you've minus your 7,000 rent. Maybe you can say it's for the entrance fee. You can note to me and say that it's a, say that it's for the, or let me just do this. Entrance fees, does it make sense? Bless. Make sense? 
Yes. Like this. You've got either options. You can put your 7,000 rand on the debit, or you can put it on the credit side. But on the credit side, you need to minus it from a certain amount. So this is actually the 99,000 rand. Happy? Yes. Let me delete that and then I brought it back. Can you all see that? I brought it back. Yeah. I brought it back. It's here. I was just trying to show you on how you can do the the, the other way around in terms of uh, uh, showing your calculations. Who is not comfortable with the membership fees account? Who is not comfortable with the membership fees account? Okay. The areas membership fees were actually at the beginning of the year with an amount of this. This is just my explanation on this but however let's let me show you on how you can record your entrance fee should you be required to do it um, okay let's tap it so you can do your entrance fees okay we know that the contra education account for this is the accumulated fund related funds but this is how you can do it um, there we go okay here uh, sorry i'm failing to get my what is it t account to show it here but what you can do here under your entrance fee uh let's say let's assume it's actually that seven thousand you can just say accumulated funds and then you put your seven thousand right here Okay, let's see. But here, you say that entrance fee. An amount of how much? Does it make sense, guys? Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is how you have to record the, 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 the entrance fee. So if I was one of the examiners in this course, I was going to ask you, what is the contra allocation for the X, uh, what is it, entrance fee? Okay. Well, you can extend it and say back. If you extend it and say back here, then you are still far. Okay. Sorry, sir. You mean if it's the entrance fees, you, you have to debit the accumulated fund? Yeah. The contra allocation account is the, 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 the the accumulated funds. Okay. Yeah, I didn't show it. Entrance fee is actually one of those easiest things. You just know, need to know where are you moving it or where are you. And then in here, you can also say um, my bank because automatically they get the money. You see entrance fees and the amount will be 7,000 rent. Okay. Like this. Sorry, I put 70 here. Let me just do this. Is it bad? Is it bad for you to can remember? Is it bad for you to can remember? Well, um, if we can look at our credit, which is greater than our debit, we've got the balance carry down of 10,000 rand. 10,000 rand, it will go through to our uh, incomes and expenditure account. Okay, Joseph, can you see on how you have to make some adjustments with regards to this? Yes, I see. Right, you first need to do the calculations for the membership fees account. Whatever the carry down that you have, it's when you make the transfer through, sorry, the transfer through maybe to your receipts, to your, uh, your receipts and payments, as well as your income and expenditure accounts. Uh, okay. What about the advanced membership that is on the debit side of the membership fees? The, the is this a, yes. Right. Is it balance or it was disclosed in the the bullet? Okay, this is also this. This is also the balance carried out. 
is the difference between your credit like and your debit like. You can also do it like this. Are you happy? Or you can also say income and expenditure account. And expenditure account. And expenditure account. Okay, I did this simply because um, my prepaid, my credit, I chose the, the, the advance payment because this side is actually greater than that side. And I chose this because it has the, uh, the prepayments there. At the end of the day, it's an income towards the business. It will go through to your income and expenditure accounts. So it doesn't matter either way. So you can choose advance payment or the advance membership or the income and expenditure, or you can say balance carry down. It's very rare that they use the balance carry down though, but it's the difference between your credit and your debit side. But in this case, you have two incomes and expenditure. It will go through to the incomes and expenditure as part of your membership fees. Okay. You mean days, right? Yes, there is two income on the de debit side. You've, there is one of 100,000 and the other one that you have just taken out now to us for 10,000. Oh, you mean this one? Yes, this one. Sorry, sorry. this this is the one that will go through to the income and expenditure account. And that one is going to be, thank you so much for reminding me of this. 100,000 rand will just go through to your income and expenditure account. But you'll see that on the solution when I send you later on. I still have to adjust that. Okay, um, I've got this that I need to share with you quickly. I've got this that I need to share with you quickly. Just a moment for me, please. Um, all right, just a moment for me, please. I just want to share something quickly with you. But is there is there is there any questions from your side in the meantime? Any questions? Any questions? So that that, that sounds like you are ready for the exam on uh, on Thursday next week. What are the challenges that you guys are facing? Any challenges? Can you hear me, people? Any challenges? Any challenges? Any questions? And uh, that's why I get to be worried because I was asking you the depreciation calculations and uh, everybody went silent. Everybody went silent. Okay, I just want to open up this quickly and uh, we need to discuss um, the the T accounts for the special funds. I just want to open it quickly. Please bear with me. My computer is just a bit being slow, but I'll get there just now. now. There we go. Uh, let's see. All right, can you guys see this T account? Yes. 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 Okay, as I've explained this before, that um, the special fund account is an account that you open when you've got a special project to run. Okay, or 
if you are planning, I give an example that if uh, the NGO is planning maybe to paint one of the buildings or to build up maybe the tennis courts or to buy a certain machinery or a certain equipment, then obviously you go into um, come up with this kind of a T account. OK, so if you can look at this T account in there, my sorry, my web, my web design is not good. Please forgive me. You can see that you've got something called expand and non expand. So it appears on both the debit and the credit. Sorry about that. Um, the non expendable is what you invest, it's what we have invested basically with our HP Bank. You remember that? I think with an interest rate of about 6%. Okay, and the interest that you earn, it means that you go into uh, reinvest them with a the 16,000 band, but it comes through to our um, uh, expendable portion or the expendable actually. Right, so if you can look at this fund, I'm just going to go quickly to the question. Let me just share this with you. We'll have uh, to have a look at the question quickly. Um, Okay, let's see. Just a moment, please. I'm just trying to track down these uh, questions. Okay, there we go. Right, you all can see this question now, right? You can see this question? Yes. Right. Um, we've uh, invested with these people and then we've earned uh, 6,000 rent of um, 16,000 rent that we have invested. It should be somewhere here on the additional information. Unless if I miss, uh, I didn't do it. Right. First and foremost, we're going to start at number 12, where it says the interest income at double H P bank was received in respect of the Dinana funds. Okay, so we have invested 16,000 rand with Dinana funds. I'm trying to track down the 16,000 rand, unless if I forgot to put it down. Um, 16,000 rand. Okay, I'll have to apologize for that one. I think I missed it somewhere. Uh, okay, can you see the Nana funds? It's here. Sorry, I'm somehow losing my, my, my eyes. Underneath, it has an amount of 16,000 rand. This is what we have invested here. If you can see, under your non-expendable with an amount of 16,000 rand. We haven't earned anything on the date of the, obviously you can't end the interest on the first day of uh, the investment with the financial institution. But we have earned the interest of 960, which is 16,000 rand of um, 6%. I don't know if I did my calculations quite quite correct, but I got 960. Can you all see that? Can you all see that? Okay. Um, out of the the plan was to actually build up or maintain whatever the kind of building or whatever the asset that we had, and uh, we needed 800 grand to actually can maintain that. And uh, we've earned interest that are actually greater than what we have to maintain on. That's why you see the balance carry down of 160. So you'd say the 960 minus 800 grand in there, then the difference would be 160. This, that means out of what we have interested, based on what we have to maintain, we have benefited an amount of 160. So if we can look at this, when you go down further there, so this is how you balance my debit, or I'll call my expansion, and my expansion on this side are actually equal. Same applies to my non uh, expendables. They're equals with an amount of 16,000 rent. And the balance brought down, which was an increase, it comes here with an amount of 160. If you go to your topic E of your study guide, you would find quite a clear example of that. Tell you what, there's a lot of examples in there that they might confuse you. If you haven't touched this and you feel like you can't do it, just forget about it. I know that it might be part of your exam. But I don't think it will cost you to an extent that you would obtain a fail. Especially if you know if you know your story quite well. Okay. Any questions from your side? Let me open up here. 
I'll send you the proper solution later on today, all of it. Any questions? Any questions? But you guys have got my blessings on uh, next week, Thursday, and I know you're gonna ride well, okay? And then you need to know that even if things are actually not at a good standing at, with you at this point in time, you have to believe that it's gonna be okay. You have to believe that you will write this exam and then you have to believe that you will make it. Okay, the reality of the matter is not everyone will make it out of the coming exam, but you do not have to despair. Okay, we all fall down to the ground, but at the end of the day, we wipe ourselves and stand up. Okay, and that would make us stronger and powerful. That's why we are human beings. We are born to make mistakes that we have to rectify. I know some of you at this point in time, you are like, but I'm not prepared. Should I write? Should I not write? Should I find somebody who can help me with the exam? Listen carefully. Believe me, it's not going to help you in the future, especially if you are going to specialize with accounting. When you cross that bridge on your second year, when you cross that bridge on your third year, you're going to struggle a lot. My best advice to you is, Go right. If you fail, fail. If you make it, it's a good thing. Okay. But out of your failure, make sure that you stand up, repeat, learn harder. Make sure that you are ready for the next account, uh, the next exam cycle. Okay. So you should carry the weight of, uh, okay, I, I, I wrote my exam. And I got my 51. Nobody helped me. I got my 51 out of my own hard work. As opposed to somebody who would say, I got 95%, but you don't know anything about your basic account equation. You don't know anything about your double entry system. You don't know what it means when we say debit or when we say credit. But in your in your in your script, or sorry, or in your academic record, you've got 95. Believe me, this is not a joke. When you cross that bridge on your second year or third year, you are going to have a problem. And it, it's, it might even be worse and worse or get worse and worse if UNISA says that we need to go back to the exam center. You are going to have a problem because there's nobody that you can lean yourself on at that time. You need to be very careful of the decisions that you're making in life so that you might be able to benefit in the future. We know as the institution that there's a lot of people who would help you out there, but you need to be very careful. Okay, previously, I remember when I told my students that I was, I remember when I wrote one of my modules, I think it was FAC 2602, because I specialized in financial accounting. Um, at the time I was writing that accounting, it was a second tier one. At the time I was writing that accounting, tell you the story. Um, I remember the content was cash flow. It was the financial analysis, and it was also the consolidations. When I go to the show ground, because I reside in Pretoria, I didn't know anything about the consolidations. And I remember on my way there, I was praying that, you know what, all I need is 60% of the financials as well as the cash flow. If I get 40% out of the consoles, there's no way I'm going to pass this paper. And when I get in there, I remember very well, my... It was 40% of the consoles and 60% of the, 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 the financials as well as your the cash flow. And I passed. I got 55% out of my 60. I'm saying this because I want to advise you that when you know, you know. And nobody can take that out of your brain away. Nobody will touch you. Right. You fall down, you know that you need to stand up. It's not an easy journey, you guys. And I know the feeling, but please do make sure that when you go there or when it, when you are at your own private space, believe in yourself, believe in the things that you have been doing. If you've been working for the 20 percent, it's OK. But you've got a chance to actually can work towards your 50 percent next year work or the 30 percent, sorry, or the 60 percent next year. It's not going to be the end of the journey. It's going to be the end of the journey for you if you find somebody who can help you to get 95% if you don't have the content. Right, so that's my goodbye to you and I wish you all the best on a Thursday next week. 
And then uh, I know I had some email from your side last night. I haven't responded through to them and I will respond to them with the ones that you are sending me through today. I wish you all the best and thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for joining me in throughout this week. I'll see you next semester, possibly. Goodbye. Oh, thank you, Ba. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir.